Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna examine a question. Does a red dot on a handgun make you better with irons? This is actually a pretty easy question to answer. Unfortunately, there is a learning curve there. Uh, people who've tried the red dot, experimented with it, and found they didn't care for it because they weren't as fast or they couldn't acquire the dot consistently, went back to their iron sights and they'll, they may, some of them may never pick up a red dot handgun again. So for them, this question is gonna be much harder to answer and they may watch this video and disagree with it because they just didn't put in the time. But first, let's consider how much time you have on iron sights. Think back to when you started shooting to where you became proficient to where you are now. For some people, it could be two or three years. For people like myself, it could be 20, 30, 35 years, uh, depending on how long you've been shooting. Uh, as people age, our eyes start to, our, our eyes ability to near focus can start to degrade, and that tends to make the red dot a little bit more advantageous over iron sights. Uh, but we're not looking necessarily at that so much as we're thinking about how, uh, as humans, we sometimes compress all of our experience into a singular event. We'll look at uh, firing 100 rounds on a red dot gun for the first time and we don't like it because we don't have the same proficiency that we did in iron sights or the same proficiency that we have on a red dot on a rifle. So we just kind of discount it or we have run the risk of discounting it or some people actually do because they feel like, well, I'm proficient with iron sights, I'm proficient with a red dot on a rifle, but I just can't get the hang of this handgun thing. Now consider the question that I asked, or the, the memory I asked you to recall and how much time you have on iron sights. If you have 10 years on iron sights on a handgun to, be, to gain proficiency, then you have to account for the fact that it's going to take you more than two or 300 rounds to become proficient with a red dot on a handgun. But the, the news isn't all bad news. Because the proficiency of the handgun is there, and of course skill depends on how proficient you'll be able to transfer from iron sights to the red dot before we start going back in the other way, which is the topic of the video. Uh, if your skill set is actually proficient, not just subjectively proficient, if you have identified metrics and you're able to perform to those metrics, you know, our time, distance, and accuracy, not just being able to hit a target. Uh, if you've identified or someone else has adjudicated uh, your skill set and said, yeah, you're, you're a good shooter. And I don't mean just like your buddy, but I mean like you actually maybe competition shooting, maybe you've taken some classes, uh, some kind of objective standard that is not your own standard. Because we tend to be really good at the standards we set for ourselves. We don't do as well as standards that are set by other people. So objective proficiency on iron sights is what I'm talking about. If you have that objective proficiency on iron sights, you may not be able to pick up the red dot immediately. In fact, there's a learning curve there because there are some fundamental differences. A lot, of, a lot of similarities, a lot of the fundamentals remain the same, but there are some distinct differences between the red dot and the irons. That being established, you're gonna have to put in an amount of time similar to the amount of time you put in iron sights. But if, let's use, a, let's use an example of you've got 10 years shooting iron sights and you're objectively proficient. It's not gonna take you 10 years to get objectively proficient with the red dot. Simply put, there are two hurdles to proficiency with the red dot if you're already objectively proficient with iron sights. Acquiring the dot and managing the dot during recoil. Uh, kind of an asterisk or, or a uh, subcategory of that is using the dot properly, meaning you stay target focused and you don't have the tendency to remain dot focused like you would stay front sight focused. Uh, red dot optics are not designed for you to stare at the dot, uh, they're designed for you to stare at the target kind of a layman's definition uh, with the dot being used that single focal plane shooting is you want to shoot and aim on the same focal plane as the target you're shooting at and that way the target kind of acts like your front sight the red dot kind of acts like your rear sight so your front sight is still in focus because you're focused on the target which is the ultimate destination of the round your point of aim your point of impact are the same
I've covered uh, draw stroke, dot acquisition, recoil management, uh, basically dot maintenance uh, in other videos. So we're not going to get too much into the techniques of that because I've already done separate videos specifically on those topics. We're just going to talk about how the red dot will actually make you better on iron sights if you go back and forth. And I do because I teach handgun. I teach dedicated red dot handgun classes, but I also teach traditional defensive handgun classes, which means bring what you carry. And I still see a lot of iron sight guns in those classes. Iron sights have their own unique characteristics that have to be taught somewhat independently from the red dot because the red dot it's not necessarily easier to teach but it is a little bit more streamlined and there's there is less to worry about now how if you become proficient on a red dot is that going to make you better with iron sights well let's look at the nature of the sighting system itself we're looking at a projected dot uh, be it um, reflex or holographic most of them are reflex for handguns and that dot exists on one focal plane, the focal plane of the target, your desired point of impact, whatever you happen to be shooting, point of aim, point of impact. Not only is the dot smaller objectively than your front sight, even though when, with certain sizes and blooming and, and depending on what brightness setting you have, it can actually appear larger than the front sight. It's, it's functionally smaller. It's effectively, realistically smaller. Not only that, but there's no alignment issues that have to necessarily take place. If I'm doing all my fundamentals right, my grip, my trigger pull, um, stance breathing, if you want to factor those in there as well, if I'm doing those correctly and I have the dot aligned with my target and I'm focused on my target and not on my dot and I pull the trigger, I'm going to get the hit that I want if the gun's properly zeroed and of course the other, you know, if you do your part, so to speak. With iron sights, there's a little bit more going on. Uh, now, the red dot does exaggerate natural tremor, natural movement. So people who pick up the red dot for the first time, they tend to feel like they're, they don't, they're not as stable. They feel like they, they're, they're losing their stability or they lost their stability when they transferred. That same movement is present on iron sights, but you don't notice it as much because you're gun focused, which means your eyes are generally anchored to the object that is moving, which does not show the same degree of movement as you would see being target focused and the dot is actually moving independent of the gun but with the gun at the same time because it's actually predicted onto uh, an optic screen on the firearm itself. So there is a kind of an exaggeration of movement because the dot moves independently from the firearm or at least appears to. Another thing with iron sights is we're able to keep that front sight in that rear notch and the sight radius itself sometimes dictates how much movement is perceived by the shooter. The shorter the sight radius, the easier it is to acquire your sight alignment, but also the less perceived movement occurs in that sight alignment when you're actually aimed in for your sight picture. The same movements occur on either system. The advantage that you get from the red dot, which is also a hurdle that you have to overcome, but once you overcome it, it becomes an advantage, is that natural trimmer shows you what your natural movement is on the red dot and on iron sights. It exists in both. And once you start to smooth out the natural movement of the dot, you're going to take that back to iron sights and become much more proficient. Because the dot is not anchored to the gun like a front sight is, we're able to see completely around our point of aim. Uh, we've got our dot, we can see under it, left, right, top of it, and through it. With an iron sight, uh, we see generally just a little bit of light on either side of that front sight post. Of course, we see what's above it, but we don't see anything below it. And realistically, we can't see outside of the front sight post until we get outside of the sight picture itself, bracketing on, uh, from the left and the right of the rear sight itself. Uh, that creates, uh, just by design, a situation where you can't be as accurate as you can be with a red dot. With the red dot projected in the, in the window itself, I'm able to see completely around my desired point of aim. Not only is this advantageous for self-defense purposes, I get to see more of my target. And of course, with the red dot, the nature of the red dot, I stay target focused versus coming back to that front sight and maybe losing some of the data on my threat, such as movements or other uh, environmental or situational concerns. But being able to see the totality of my sight picture allows me to read uh, what the gun's doing uh, much more efficiently. That front sight is going to reciprocate with the slide, so it's kind of like a car wreck. It starts, it ends, and then you try to put, piece back the fragments of what actually happened to recollect what was taking place between the beginning and the end of the accident. Usually you get big, ugly pieces of memory that aren't really functional and sometimes don't go quite together because of the nature of the event. The slide reciprocating reciprocates faster than the human eye can reaccommodate on focal planes, so it's harder to track the front sight during recoil, whereas the red dot, it's light, it moves at the speed of light, and we're able to see the dot's behavior during that recoil pattern. We can't track every single step of its movement, but if the dot bounces 
we can recollect how the dot behaves during that recoil pattern. If the dot's bouncing high left, high right, if it's disappearing from the window and then coming back from a different angle, say it, 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 you, you shoot and it bounces left and disappears and it comes back from the right, this is data that we can use to improve our technique and this is data that you do not get from iron sights. Usually iron sight data is target specific, meaning we shoot and then we assess. We see how we shot or maybe we, you know, we fire a couple of rounds and we see where we hit or we see where our sights settle back to on the target. But it's a much uglier, unrefined way to diagnose inefficiencies than what the red dot is going to give us because the red dot allows us to diagnose those deficiencies or inefficiencies as they are occurring. When I first started shooting red dots, dedicated red dots, not just playing with them, uh, I was more proficient and I was faster consistently on iron sights. And that goes back to how much time you have on irons versus how much time you've been shooting a dot gun. I can, I can safely say now that dedicated shooting red dots almost, I wouldn't say exclusively, but much more than I shoot iron sights, uh, about five, maybe six years of the filming of this video, uh, my proficiency has met my iron sight and exceeded my iron sight proficiency. However, when I shoot an iron sight gun, the improvements that I was forced to make because the dot requires a little bit greater degree of discipline because it, it exaggerates your mistakes more than iron sights ever will. When I go back to iron sights, I take that skill set with me. It doesn't just disappear. It's not like I forgot how to shoot iron sights. I still understand the principles of sight pitcher sight alignment. But what the dot allowed me to do was refine my grip technique, my trigger technique, my stance, one-handed shooting, uh, support hand only shooting, shooting from you know, unorthodox or austere positions, uh, all of those factors in, in self-defense shooting were improved by the fact that the gun gave me instant feedback. That dot was always telling me what the gun was doing and how I was effectively managing what the gun was doing. There are no shortcuts regardless of who you are or regardless of what you do. If you want to become proficient with any system, you have to be willing to put in the time, the so-called 10,000 hour rule. Uh, that's not actually a rule, uh, but it is a good guidepost. You have to be willing to put in the time through deliberate practice to develop the skill set and the proficiency. But if you are willing to put in the time on a red dot on a handgun, it is going to improve your iron sight skill set because like I said, it identifies things that you cannot observe in real time uh, on iron sights. From an instructor standpoint, I like the dot a lot more because finally a student can explain to me what they're seeing and I'm not getting the before and after. I can actually, hey, you know, what happened during recoil? He'd be like, oh, well, the dot was, the dot was kind of hooking to the left, or the, the dot bounced up and then it came down and went to the bottom right of the window. This is helping me diagnose what the student's doing in real time and give real time suggestions right there on the range. Hey, instead of me thinking, looking at the target, thinking about what he said, trying to visualize it myself, trying to see if I've experienced it, I can actually be like, okay, yeah, the, the dot's moving, you know, if the dot's consistently bouncing to the right, then this is a grip pressure issue. This is something that we can work with. If the dot is driving below the target and then he's having to bring it back up, okay, I can identify that as probably he's applying more pressure than he needs for recoil management. And he's having to, he's pushing, driving the gun below his target and have to come back up to it. So all these factors can be accounted for in real time with the red dot. And this is just something that's not as easy. Uh, with the iron sights. So even from an instructor standpoint, of course, I, I appreciate the red dot for what it does. But more than that, uh, you finally are able to harness the nuance of what you're doing. You're able to, as a shooter individually, on the on, uh, just by yourself out there shooting practicing, you can say, okay, my dot is consistently coming back to the left. That could be a grip pressure issue. Uh, it probably is. You're probably applying more pressure with one hand than you are with the other. During dry fire, if you've got your solid, your traditional shooting grip, and when you press that trigger, the dot's bouncing just, just a little bit down, then that could be a pre-ignition push. And this is something that it's harder to identify with those iron sights. Um, moving forward, and this is a question that'll probably come up, so I'll just go ahead and address it here. If you are gonna carry a red dot gun for, for self-defense or for duty, how often should you practice with your iron sights? And my answer is as much as you can. Uh, the, uh, the red dot is not a 100% a definitive replacement for iron sights. It is psychophysiologically more, advantage, uh, more advantageous of a sighting system. It makes more sense for human self-defense. It provides greater degree of accuracy at distance as well as close range because of that single focal plane shooting. However, electronic things can fail. And while I don't see too many quality optics go down, 
Uh, I, I've experienced it myself. A battery has died or there's been some kind of water that got into the optic or the optic broke or the optic fogged up. We still have to maintain the basic level of aiming, which is the iron sights that should always stay on the gun because let's be honest, they don't take up a lot of room and they really don't weigh anything worth noticing. So there's no reason to ever really remove them from the gun regardless of how reliable these optics become. Uh, you should maintain that proficiency. But what you will see is once you gain a basic level of proficiency on the red dot, you go back to iron sights, you'll notice your grip is more consistent, your grip is tighter, your trigger press is more consistent. You don't have a, as much of an inclination to pre-ignition push or recoil anticipation. Uh, and your ability to get the sights back on target is going to be much, much faster. So I definitely hope that answers the question. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.